Hello, YouTubers, French compatriots, Bootlicker Shills, Nestle Search, Peasants, Vassals, Minions, Homelanders. I'm Useful Idiot. Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the good old USA, or as uh, you should be now calling it, the Homeland. And uh, so that's kind of what I, I want to talk about this uptick in the use of the term Homeland. We see all the politicians and the media pundits and the talking heads all uh, seeming to uh, dramatically uh, use the word homeland and it's uh, these things happen on purpose and uh, th this uptick of course is part of creating that mentality of a siege state and, uh, and, and so this perpetual war uh, uh, starting with this new war uh, on ISIS and the state of perpetual global war um, and now the terminology homeland becomes all the more important so that's basically my theory as to why uh, we're seeing this uh, dramatic uptick in the use. Uh, they want to start uh, creating that siege mentality, uh, that insular mentality, that uh, 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 fortress America uh, mentality that uh, we are now under attack from all sides. And uh, I kind of chafe at that whole idea that we're uh, under attack from all sides. I know people, a lot of people are convinced of some impending terrorist threat, but uh, considering we have a some 13 years after 9-11 uh, and, and without even getting into discussion about 9-11 itself we have 13 years of the past and almost every single so-called terrorist uh, uh, potential terrorist attack has been uh, some losers in some Hoboken town in uh, somewhere around the country that are entrapped and set up by the FBI and other intelligence agencies so this is uh, this idea that we need these uh, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars spent on this uh, massive global anti-terrorism network um, doesn't seem to have achieved much, certainly not in the economic sense. But uh, So we go, go back to this whole idea of the homeland. And um, we also have the media getting on board, the Hollywood media, the television shows. And they've always been on board with this for obvious reasons. But here we have a show called uh, Homeland. So this just helps. Uh, create the mythology and this uh, national mentality that's being molded. Uh, notice a little red riding hood surrounded by Arabs there. And uh, I feel a little uncomfortable with the, the term homeland. Um, one has to, to wonder uh, how they chose it. We have uh, Soviet Union um, using it uh, as the motherland. We have uh, Nazi Germany using the fatherland as the homeland. The only thing that was left and why do they want to use this name that's in the company of those two countries and, and particularly how they used it two countries like Russia uh, the Soviet Union specifically and, um, and uh, Nazi Germany who of course were both propaganda masters uh, no accident uh, that they're mining the same kind of material for things like the homeland and this also goes along with the whole idea of the, the flag pins let's remember that and uh, in Nazi Germany and I would imagine there's something fairly comparable in the Soviet Union. Um, there was all sorts of insignia and regalia that were designed so that uh, people's allegiance to the party uh, would be known at all times, at all functions, in all dress. And, um, and we find that in a similar situation now in the United States where everyone uh, has to wear these flag pins. And I, and I say that they have to wear them because look at the few who have uh, chosen not to wear at one point or another only to be chastised and have, have that turned into a political event in itself. And that says a lot about this whole Nazification, uh, for lack of a better term, that we see going on uh, in the United States with things like these uh, mandatory uh, flag pin wearing and this, uh, this whole idea of the homeland. And, uh, and I, I would even lump together the, the whole idea of American exceptionalism. One could get into an argument about the relative merits of uh, American exceptionalism uh, and there are uh, legitimate arguments for both sides of the argument about American exceptionalism but unfortunately we see that term uh, bantered about in much the same way that the idea of the master race uh, was bantered about in Nazi Germany. I'm, I'm quite uncomfortable about that. Um, we have this uh, uh, mandatory uh, uber nationalist um, requirements uh, now, particularly in the government, 
And a lot of that, uh, unfortunately, seems to have some parallels with this relationship uh, we have with Israel. We have a lot of uh, media uh, that's dominated by uh, pro-Zionist and uh, that create uh, material like this show, and they have a lot at stake to creating that same sort of siege mentality uh, in the United States uh, that we find in Israel. And, um, and needless to say, the, the, some of these uh, elements of Nazification that I've talked about are, are prevalent in, in the United States and Israel, and, and, uh, and we find that uh, those sort of qualities in other countries as well, including Ukraine notably, but uh, this whole idea of uh, the chosen people, the master race, the American exceptionalism, uh, unfortunately, I have a hard time dividing those concepts, uh, at least uh, the way they're utilized by uh, politicians and, and handlers uh, and, the, and the way they're used to manipulate the, the minds of the mob who distort, distort the meanings of uh, a lot of these ideas. But uh, so why, why do we have this buildup? Why do we have uh, the flag pins? Why do we have the homeland? Um, why do we have uh, this exploitation of uh, the, the high moral ground and this uh, colonial message of de delivering democracy to the world? And um, I think uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier in the video, we're, we're being set up for this siege mentality, this uh, perpetual war. Um, uh, ISIS is a, a much uh, better boogeyman than Al-Qaeda was and uh, is, is going to uh, help uh, major players achieve a lot of geopolitical aims in the area. And um, so this, uh, this whole smoke and mirrors uh, and propaganda machinery that's uh, operating in the United States is helping to to color uh, the outcome of what we see uh, certainly unfolding in the Middle East uh, and around the globe. But uh, so anyway, I, I'd be curious to hear from other people uh, what they think. Is, are they uh, noticing the fact that homeland is being uh, used more and more and more uh, and, and the purpose uh, uh, for why there's an uptick? Is it, is it accidental? Is it just the way um, these talking points uh, uh, grow uh, with a life of their own through the media and politicians and, uh, and, and what do you think about this whole thing with the flag pins and, um, and uh, this mining this uh, same sort of imagery that very notorious regimes in history uh, have used and particularly this uh, McCarthyan um, witch hunt um, for, for people who don't wear their flag pins and questioning uh, their uh, their allegiance and questioning their loyalty to the United States. And then, oddly enough, uh, even in the United States, in our government, uh, even questioning uh, your loyalty to Israel uh, is uh, something to uh, be worthy of uh, virulence and a witch hunt. So, uh, obviously, that connection is there as well. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too?